Prime Wrestling officially sanctioned by the Ohio State Athletic Commission. Prime Wrestling contains material that may not be suitable for all audiences. The views and opinions expressed on this broadcast do not reflect those of Sports Time Ohio or its affiliates. The athletes featured in this program are trained professionals. Please do not try this at home. Viewer discretion is advised. Intimidationclothing.com and it is scheduled for one fall. All right, Joe. Here's the music I love. Introducing to hear. first, he is from the west side of Columbus, weighing in at 177 pounds. Jeremy Madrox. This is what I'm about. Be fair to chair, Joe. Pardon the interruption. Mr. Madrox the Butcher. Do I, I have to call him the madman? Do I have to be fair? Well, if you wouldn't, then you'd be a partial broadcaster. When has he when has he been fair since he got here? Helping injure Zach Gallagher. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He's telling LeVar how to do his job. One half of the Prime Wrestling Tag Team Champions, Jeremy Madrox. Kicking Zach Gowan and Gregory Iron out of the building. Beating Greg for the tag titles two on one. Madrox has earned none of his accolades. It's all been thanks to friends and family in high places. And his opponent, Hailing from Cleveland, Ohio, he weighs in at 167 pounds. He is the cap hero, Gregory Myers. The handicapped hero, Triple Crusader, unfortunately, without his tag team partner, Zach Gowan, once again banned from the building by you know who. Hey, hey I don't want any problems here. Whoa, 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 that's, that's not jumping on me. We know who that should belong to. We should have you on me. Gary? Right, man? Where's going? Jerry Madden's not Gregory Iron and Zach Gowan never lost a tag match to lose those championships. Well, they lost that handicap match, and you gotta realize they're that handicap heroes. They weren't very heroic that day. They well, just I, lost. That's what they do. They lose matches. Well, even heroes are just human sometimes, Aaron. Stacking the deck once again, manipulating everybody and everything under the radar of the rest of upper management, which you've certainly been able, in my estimation, to brainwash, if I do say so. Well, it's a high compliment that you're paying me, Joe, but... Well, Madrox and Iron one-on-one -on -one, been waiting for this one for quite some time. 
you know what? Nice back elbow by Gregory Aaron, although I'm a little bit nervous because Aaron, by the end of this hour, this company could change. We could have a new prime wrestling champion, and as dominant as Crimson has been and as dark and macabre representation he's been, I never thought I'd see somebody I'd want to see with a championship less. But man, check out the energy of Gregory Iron. Now wait a minute, I don't know if that's 21 fair. right hands. 21, Joe, how did you count that? You're talking. Now, Jeremy Madrox, on the other hand, he only needs one right hand to beat you. There it is. Now cover him and pin him, Jeremy. It's not over yet. It almost was, though, and it could have been. Oh, give me a break. I mean, this should be some kind of a handicap match. If I was Jeremy Madrox, it should be one on none. Last, last week on the broadcast, Aaron, Johnny Gargano defeated Marion Fontaine, took it to Jeremy Madrox, sent a message to two big megalomaniacs. But I'm interested to hear as Iron gets a cover for two. What was in that letter that one of our staff handed to Gargano, delivered from I don't know who, a message that I don't know what? what? Joe said it was 21, I don't know. What? what? What's he coming to you for? If, I don't know. If, if, what? Plan B. Did he just say plan B? Jeremy Madrox has informed me that for this match to continue, it's going to be under his stipulations. Well, what is that? What, 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 what are you pulling out of here? Oh. What? So I Jeremy hear that right. Madrox has informed me that his stipulation is that Gregory must compete with one arm tied behind his back. Are you kidding me? Joe, a brilliant plan. A brilliant plan hatched by, some say he's a madman, I say he's Jeremy Madrox. Oh, come on. And you're authorizing this, upper management? Hey, I'm the announcer of the year. I'm upper management. I, so Greg has the no prime, choice. The prime minister, yes. I'm laying down the go. You have to do this, Greg. Jeremy Madrox has informed me, the referee, you must tie Greg's left arm. Oh, his good arm. His, that right arm has been afflicted by cerebral palsy. It is a direct right. order from upper management and the prime minister to tie Greg's left arm. Oh, poor Labar and poor Gregory Iron especially right now. Now this is fair, Joe. Now this is fair. We've got to be fair to Jer. And being fair to Jeremy Madrox is our business. Look at the look on business is good. Look at the look on Gregory Iron's face. The stupid look on Gregory Iron's face. He's looking at him going there and smack that look off his face. Give him a new look. Come on. Is this but, really necessary? But I'll let Jer do that. Chair. Well, Greg will never quit. He won't back down. He'll take the fight. He'll take the challenge. No question about it. Well, of course he will. He's stupid. He should just tap out right now. Just like all the Prime Foundation should. Just give up. You know, it's time to surrender. You got to know when to fold them, and you got to know when to hold them, and then you got to know when to fold them again, Joe. And when you fold them at the wrong time, you hold them for too long. And that's well, always been my philosophy. Iron taking a defensive stance here. He oh, can, yeah, lay on your back. He can Good still job. fight. He can fight with his feet. This is almost like Ali Anoki once upon a time. He's looking to get pinned. All you got to do is hook the leg, Jer. Well, easier to. Oh, there Iron. it is. Trying to get out of the way of an elbow drop, but couldn't. And Madrox, how is this fair? <laughs> Greg's trying to earn a return match for the tag titles. His partner's banned from the building. He can't get a fair break. He lost the championship two on one. And now he's got to deal with this. Hey, we're just doing what
what's best for business, Joe. And we got a table match later tonight. Hey, Gregory Iron doubted that Megalomania was taking over. You doubted the Megalomaniacs were here to stay. And we're just proving everybody wrong and proving ourselves right. It's not that I doubted your power, it's you're underestimating the resolve of the foundation of this organization. Well, you're underestimating Commissioner T. Covered by Madrox. He got two and notice Greg could have laid down there. That would have been the easy thing to do, but that's not what Greg's all about. Well, Greg's a strong warrior. He's so inspirational. Tell us about it, Joe. Tell us how Greg is this hero to so many kids and to all these people that have disabilities. Well, he and Zach are touring the country doing charity work, motivational speaking, part of a number of great worthy organizations that specialize in underprivileged children. And Greg Iron and Zach Gowan have become great flag bearers of that movement. Well, guess what? Jeremy Madrox, Marion Fontaine, myself, great flag bearers of Prime Wrestling and what we exemplify here in Prime Wrestling, and the Megalomaniacs exemplify. And Madrux making the official ask if Iron will submit. Iron saying no. No, no, no. You gotta appreciate that. Well, I don't know if I appreciate that. You know, sometimes you gotta be, you gotta be smart instead of being stupid. And that's what Gregory Iron's being right now. You're not an inspiration to anybody when you're permanently out of the sport of professional wrestling when you can't go and speak to those children or to help those homeless people well, when you can't donate to those idiots charities hey come on have some respect madrix respects nobody that's right as long as he's a tag champ that's all that matters right he respects his brother his cousin and me there's a hard right second time Measuring Greg. And Greg, he would, he would rather be knocked unconscious than surrender. Oh, but Iron still kicks out. He almost looked that way. He almost had that look in his eyes that we've seen before, Joe. I mean, come on. How stupid are you, Irons? His name is Iron. Gregory Iron. When did he change it? Oh, there's a knee and a kick. Oh, whoa. whoa. Iron, do what he can. And what, As a result of a disqualification, the winner, Jeremy Madrox. <laughs> oh, what, that's called a low blow? Yes, he kicked him low, Joe. That's called a low blow? Oh man, almost hurt him too. You gotta be kidding me. And, 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 and Greg's not done. Greg, desperation maneuver, or a judgment call, and there's, now Greg gonna make a count. Whoa, 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 not the jewels. Not the jewels. But Labar, yeah. Labar's a tied Greg. That's not fair. I should, Labar, Chair. Labar's a tied Greg. Chair, look. Chair. Chair, wait, wait, wait. And now Greg has a chance to fight. Chair, wait. Wait, Chair, look out. And Greg on top of Madrox! And now this is the fight we should have had. Come oh on no, guys. Come on guys, get in there! Fontaine, Ricky Shane Page, Matthew Justice, Marty Bell as well. And there are, oh, come on! <laughs> Joe, this I didn't hear you call her the marvelous Marty Bell. It's She's uncalled marvelous. for. It's uncalled for, damn it! Come on. And look at how great this is, Joe. Celebrate with Can us. Can we get off Come of this? On. This is disgusting. Celebrate them, bro. Yeah, all about celebration. The megalomaniacs have taken over this show again. And I don't know. I'm going to talk to Commissioner T right now. I'm going to text message him. We may have to some repercussions here from the bar. Oh, stop it. You don't have the prime championship yet. Well, we, this could be a long night. I can't wait to get it, though, Joe. I got your hero right here. Come on. 
Fontaine line. Fontaine. Where's your hero now? Huh? Where's Zach Cowan? Is he gonna hobble on bad, out here? Bad from the building, you know well. Yeah, he had you know some what we're words for me, but he's not saying anything now. Oh, now Fontaine's gonna talk. Yeah, yeah, Lavar. Everybody's waited weeks and weeks. To figure out where's Matt Cross? What's he been doing? What's he been thinking? And it's no secret that it was disheartening to watch a company that I helped build from the ground up be taken over by people that don't deserve it. But that's nothing new. You see, I've seen that for years. This is my 12th year in this crazy business, so I don't even blame the Vicks and the McGuire's and the Megalomaniacs. I blame the people stupid enough to help put them into power. People stupid enough to think that that would help them or any of us. People like Matt Justice. Matt Justice, you want to come in here with your womanly long hair and your rock star good looks, huh? And you want to help those guys? I don't believe that. I don't buy that for a second. You told us that you wanted what we all wanted, and then you betrayed us. And specifically, you betrayed me. We were in a match together, we had that one, and the next thing I know, kapuya, kapuya! I feel the wrath of Windows Vista. Right in two! You know what that feels like? It does not feel good. So Matt Justice, you think you're so great. You think you're as good as the Johnny Garganos, as the Matt Crosses, as the Greg Irons of this company. Well, if you think you're that good, why don't you step up like a man and face me one-on-one? -on -one? I know what you're thinking. It's not two-on-one, even though my beard will be there. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Right? If you think you're that good, why don't you face me? And why don't you take that TV title and put that on the line? Because I am going to show everybody that when I want something done, I'm not going to run to some stooge or put up with some BS. I make it happen. And that is a promise. Make it like a tree and get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, get used to it. It's happening this month, it's happening next month, and if I have anything to say about it, it's happening for eternity. Because the megalomaniacs are here, we've taken over, and we've reformed this whole entire promotion. I Greg, lick your wounds, because you don't deserve to be out here. I can't believe that they're still out here hey, celebrating. Lamar, once so high and mighty, now look at you. You got a t-shirt with that stupid looking tie. You are a disgrace to this industry, man. Well, look at where you're at now. And here comes Vic. Vic had some bad news in the back Come earlier. On, Lamar. Hold on. I'm sick and tired of people in the back not giving me my respect. People seem to forget who runs this company. It's not Johnny Gargano, it's not Matt Cross, it's me. That's right, Commissioner T runs this. And me. You, get in the damn ring. Well, I'm talking to Justin LaBar. Oh, got all day, Justin. Yeah, punishment. There you go, Gravel LaBar. The assistant of Vic. LaBar. You know what, I just saw what you did. Helping out your little handicapped freak of a friend, Greg Iron, huh? You want to help him out? Not only that, you've been a terrible ring announcer the last few matches. Just absolute garbage. So I'm going to show you how it's done. So what I want you to do is, yet again, you're fired from another position. Go back to my office, clean it up real nice. Get the hell out. You're done, Lamar. You're 86. You just got your pink slip, LaVar. They're taking over everything, systematically. You're gonna get buried. <laughs> no, you don't wanna know where my head's at? I'm adding another match tonight. We're not ready to go home, right? So with that being said, I'm your new ring announcer, Commissioner T, and coming to the ring at this time, a man who stands five feet high. 
five feet wide and not one ounce of athletic ability, Mr. RBI, Isaiah Bonds. Well, actually, this matchup was already scheduled. Mr. RBI, Isaiah Bonds is set for one-on-one -on -one competition. But it wasn't official. Because Commissioner T didn't say it was official. Here tonight, and RBI understandably is coming out very, very apprehensive. He's coming out in his catcher uniform. I always thought he was a pitcher, but I guess he's a catcher. RBI slides into the ring and... Watch out, Mo! Oh. Hey, hey, hey! Well, I guess this show's gonna continue with Megalomaniacs everywhere. Hold on, hold on, you baseball bat swinging idiot. Step back. He's an idiot. Your opponent tonight... Your opponent tonight... You know what? I'm already bored. Get him. What? Come on! <laughs> what the hell? Wow. Mr. RBI has a chance to hit a grand slam. All he has to do is be Matt Justice. It's a Man damn fun no. team. It's a damn gang buggy. He's got the bat, Jim. Madrox and Ricky Shane Page. Come on, Ricky, just hit him. Touch him all time. Ricky Shane Page. No. Come on. Stop oh. it. This is what I'm talking about. RBI, you ain't my boy. We ain't never been friends. You've always been in the on deck circle. You've never been up to bat. The elbow, the elbow. The heater, Joe. Forget the curveball. Ricky just gave him the heater. Come on. Let's get off of this. Let's take you to news on Johnny Gargano, the mysterious letter he received. We tried to catch up with him to find out what that letter contained a bit earlier. Johnny Gargano was cornered in the parking lot earlier this afternoon and questioned about the contents of the envelope. He gave no information to us, but was clearly bothered by the contents he read, presumably from the megalomaniacs. We'll update this story further in the weeks ahead. that that was justice what it was speaking of justice we're back here on prime wrestling Vic is still talking shut up Joe <laughs> Can hear you in the ring you got served Joe <laughs> Ain't it? I told hey don't don't mess with him Aaron's up anyways so. I told Ricky, hold on, I told Ricky that he would do this tonight by himself. The megalomaniacs do not okay. realize what we just saw. I on gave the back. Ricky my word. I gave Ricky my word that he would do this by himself. So what I've done for you guys, the rest of you megalomaniacs, is I've set up a private viewing session of the massacre that is gonna happen here in just a matter of moments. So if you go back to the back, right through that curtain, there's a room set up. With a monitor, you guys will be able to watch us and Ricky become the new prime champion. Justin LaBar is all alone back in that office and no one realizes it. Aaron was off headset when we saw that on our monitor and then these megalomaniacs all in the ring do not have a single clue. And now we, I guess we're preparing for our main event, but. They have a private room. LaBar may have all night back there with a wide open laptop.
Well, while you can, guys, because we'll see where this one's going. Uh, bye, Marty. Marty Bell, very time. Awesome. For main event of the evening for the Bronx Championship in a tables match. Did you miss me, Joe? Oh, yeah, so much. So, and you didn't miss anything, don't worry. Right. And here's the table. Whoever is driven through that table first loses. How hard is it to set up a table? Let's go. I'll fire you both. Justin LeBron. Oh, he's going to fire them. Already fire in the you. ring at this time. He is the most dominant athlete Prime Wrestling has ever seen. He took out Jason Bain, Killed and him. he's about to become the new Prime Champion, Ricky Shane Page. As long as he doesn't come over here. And his opponent, your Prime Champion, oh, this is gonna get a busy. member of the Ed Wrestling Society. You tried to recruit him, pal. He's also your Prime Champion, Crimson. Nothing more needs to be said. Let's just fight about it. Uh oh. Here we go. They're going to hook him up. What a terrible. Stop ringing the bell, Aaron. You have no idea what you're doing. Ricky and Crimson <laughs> one on one Prime Championship. And this could be the end of Prime Wrestling as we know it. If you have all the championships, all the power, all the smoke, the front office, the boardroom, everything. Oh, no, missed. Crimson went for missed early, and referee Bruce Gray got it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Bruce Gray is, is hurt severely. That missed will blind you. That'll sting for, for hours, if not days. And Ricky, look out. Don't come over here. Watch my award, Joe. I want my trophy to get it. And predictably, it's gotten ugly early. Their original matchup was wilder than any television matchup I've seen in the history of this great organization. But now they come in with a personal grudge as well. And you have to wonder, how does the Dead Wrestling Society feel? How does the Foundation of Prime feel? And certainly we know the Megalomaniacs yucking it up in their private dressing room with their big screen monitor. Oh, look out. Well, they're coming this way, and I'm, I would, if I never see Ricky over here again, it'll be too soon. But watch my award, Joe. Look out here, we got, we got innocent people around here. Look out. And we got the table, and Ricky is, hits the table head first. And a second time. No. Oh, he's got. And now, strangling Ricky Shane Page with a, a cord from somewhere. Crimson choking out Ricky. And Ricky with a hard shot. Ricky head first into that post. My gosh. Yo, I don't even know if I can call this. Oh my God, Crimson back jumped. I don't even know if I'm still on. They were choking each other with a cord. It may have been mine. No, we got technical equipment all over the place here. It's very dangerous and volatile. This is Prime. This is Prime. This is Prime. People are loving it. Ricky, it cribs it up on the, up on the staging. I don't know what's happening here. Hey, look, they're going. Ricky's going to suplex him. Then we're going to win the championship right now. <laughs> My God. What a suplex. We've got everything picked up now. That was down there. All the electrical equipment, everything is picked up. I, I think I'm back on the air. I hope I'm on the air here. This is the most important match in prime wrestling history. This is for the championship. Well, these two men certainly have, have just created an absolutely chaotic situation. God! Ricky Shane Page with a chair. That echoed 
No description necessary. And now propping it into the corner. These men know what lengths they'll have to go through to destroy one another. We apologize for the frantic nature of this broadcast so far, how chaotic it's been here at ringside. But my God, we're all in, de in jeopardy out here. And I don't want to be anywhere near a Ricky Shane Page, and I have to be. I mean, who does? I mean, well, unless you're a good friend of his like I am, or like, or like Commissioner T is. Well. Joe, you don't know what it's like to be a friend of Ricky Shane Page. It's going to take a lot more than friends to get the job done here. And Rick Look sets Crimson head first. My God, it's carnage out here. All for the Prime Championship. All for ultimate power. Wait, Ricky. Oh, I don't think he can hear me. Oh. And the chair hits Ricky. Ricky caught it at the front. And he caught it at the back of the head on the way down. Joe, you said this was going to be the damnedest thing we'd ever seen. And I, 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 I think you're right. And we may just be getting started. Yeah, we haven't even gotten. Oh, no. This won't end until somebody goes through the table. Joe, I'm nervous. Well, you should be. It's what you've been waiting how many months for with this grand plot. But Crimson. May bring it all come crashing down in a, a case of ultimate irony. Crimson doesn't want to save this company, but he may be the one that ends up doing it. The two men with the highest pain thresholds in this organization. He's going to crush my dreams. I don't trust Crimson either. I'll just hang out back here as Crimson looking to attempt to finish this thing off. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'd like to get in there, but I'm not going to. Well, as much as uh, Vic's doing about as much as he can do, yelling from the stage, and I don't blame Vic for a darn second. If I were him, I'd be in my car somewhere, let alone here at ringside, but Vic knows what the stakes are. He's been the commissioner for this reason. Look at the table set up. Oh, look out, Ricky puts the brakes on. That could have done it. Match could end in a heartbeat. Just clubbing offense from these men. Oh, jeez. And now, well, we've seen that many times. The chairs stacked in an implement of destruction. Oh, Ricky, he knows what he's doing here. He's got him right where he wants him. We're setting up to go home with the Prime Championship. Power bomb attempt from Ricky Shade Page, but Crimson turns himself to dead weight. Uh oh. The roaring elbow. Counter up to the hole. And Ricky hits face first. Keep in mind, Crimson's the one that ran Raven out of this organization some years ago. And he's taken that as a token of his victory, his dominance. Oh no. Jeez! Oh! God, what impact. I've never seen, I've never seen anything like that. Did you see the way Ricky's head spiked off of, off of the chairs? I mean, a man prides himself on. And Ricky hit head first. There was no way to protect himself. He can absorb pain. Oh, and he's coming right back. And Crimson hits hard. Vic, with words of encouragement, this entire plan coming down to this. But we've seen so many men try to stop Crimson. Jason Bain, Matt Mason, Johnny Gargano, some of the toughest of the tough. Come on, Ricky! But with very rare times, does it have successful results? Ricky, you gotta finish him now. I mean, there's no time to waste here, Joe. If he's gonna finish, he has to do it as soon as possible. That is the game plan. Oh, Crimson versus Oh, Ricky on the chairs. Get, just the chairs, right? Not through the table, that's how you win the match. Okay, we're good, we're still good, Vic. I don't know if we're good. Ricky, Whoa, Shane Page, double over in pain. If he's not through the table, it, we're good. <laughs> I 
I don't know. Well, I haven't seen Ricky Shane Page down this long. That's a testament in and of itself to Crimson. I've never seen a table match here on Prime Wrestling, and, and here is for the Prime Wrestling Championship. First time the Prime title's been decided in a table match. First table match in Prime Wrestling in, I believe, over three years. Oh, Ricky is perched. Both these men, they're big boys. We're gonna probably, about 500 pounds combined. And all that pressure on Crimson's head. Skull first on the steel chairs. And that's, I mean, hey, if, if pinfalls were legal in this match, Ricky Shane Page, no doubt. Oh, the elbow change. pad. The elbow pad is off. Oh, you know what he's going for. He's gonna hit that roaring air ball. This will do it, no. Crimson counters. And now. Wait, no. Witch's wheel. The no, witch's no. wheel. Oh, Ricky hits with a such torque. Did but, you see the way his neck twisted, his head bent? But keep in mind, a pinfall will not work. Crimson no. must pick Ricky back up no, no, and no. put him to the table, which Crimson's signaling for right now. Yeah, but he's signaling right in the face of Vic. How disrespectful to the man who's the commissioner of this company. Oh no, he's setting that table up. Well, this could do it. Something devious in mind. Oh! What was that? I can't. Oh my God. Oh, they're getting too close for, to me, Joe. Well, they're Get too, over here. This has been too close to com for comfort since, since the outset. Super, no, superplex. You got no. Oh no. Megalomaniacs invade. Fontaine. Madrox, Justice, Crimson's outnumbered four on one. Ah, that's the way to do it. It is four on one. I like those And guys. they've taken over again. Steve of the night, wait. Gory, Dead Wrestling Society. Watch out. Represented by Gory, and Gory gonna fight for his master. But he's just, he's outnumbered. There's just too many of them. There's just too much. And it's all megalomaniac once again. Wait a second. Whoa, whoa. That's the bell, Bobby Beverly. It's Matt Cross. Matt wants a piece of justice. Beverly wants a piece of anybody. All three factions represented in this battle for power. Here comes Johnny Gargano. And Gargano unloading on everybody. Joe, this is ridiculous. Every faction wants control. It's absolute warfare for the prime title. The Maniacs are out of here. But man, these guys are in pursuit. Beverly, Gory, M Dog are after the Maniacs, and this brawl will continue in that private viewing room. And Gargano's got some scores to settle with both men. Oh my God, Ricky just shrugged off that super kick. Oh my Lord, a chair! Get up, and Ricky, get up. Get up. Ricky gonna finish this, gonna finish Crimson off. Ricky's gonna do it. Ricky, no wait, but Gargano, Gargano pushed Ricky through. That's the match, it's over. Ricky Shane Page fell to the table and Crimson's victorious. Crimson is the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and still prime wrestling champion, Crimson. Crimson victorious, the embodiment of evil, out to spread pestilence for so long, but ultimately, Crimson indirectly protects the championship. Ricky Shane Page shrugged off a chair shot. Oh my God. Ricky Shane Page. He, Ricky Shane Page shrugged off. He shrugged off a chair shot. He went to finish Crimson, but Gargano was ready. Gargano was waiting. And after Fontaine and Madrix a week ago, 
Gargano sends a message to the third megalomaniac. But what is in? What is in that letter? We'll see you next time on Prime TV.